Welcome to the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast, bringing you open and honest conversations about resources in Tuscarawas County. Now here's your host, Jody Salvo. Hi, this is Jody Salvo. Welcome to the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast. This is September and we'd be amiss, greatly amiss if we were not speaking about National Recovery Month. And because of that, um, I have some guests here. We're going to actually be doing two podcasts today. So you'll see one now and you'll see one next week. Um, one is about a recovery program new to Tuscarawas County. And um, the next week one is going to be a recovery story. So I think y'all will enjoy listening, learning a little bit more about recovery And um, I think what's so exciting about National Recovery Month is it's an opportunity for us. You know, we hear about drugs all the time. We hear about overdose. We hear about the struggles. Um, But I don't think we always hear as much about the success stories. And I think we all need to understand addiction. We need to understand the struggles that come with that. But we also need to understand, man, recovery is good and it happens and um, it's just a wonderful thing. So with that, I'm gonna introduce my guest. Um, Actually, I'll let y'all introduce yourselves. I'll take it to Leslie. Hi guys, I'm Leslie Wright. I'm co-lead pastor at Lifeway Church on the south side of New Philly and I'm married to this guy right here and honored to be here today. Awesome. My name's Travis Wright and I co-pastor Lifeway Church on the south side of New Philly with Leslie. (laughs) I'm Bradley Fields. I am a member at Lifeway, and I am actually in school uh, to be a recovery pastor for Lifeway. Really neat. Actually, I look forward to learning more about a recovery pastor. That's that's kind of fun. Now, listen, we have you guys here today. Um, You all have started a new uh, program um, at your church, and it sounds like it's meeting a ton of people's need here in the county. So tell us what you all just launched. Go ahead. (laughs) So this is not something that just began two months ago. This is something that had been on our hearts for a couple of years now that we've been praying for and just knowing that we, we supported uh, the recovery initiatives in the County. And we were a part of hope Sunday and the hope rising events. And, um, but we knew there was something more that we as Lifeway, we wanted to contribute to seeing those struggling in any form of addiction. It doesn't necessarily have to be chemical dependency or alcohol. Um, So many things we can get caught in that control our lives and that we need to find freedom from. And we wanted to contribute more than we currently were to seeing people walk through recovery and find freedom, true freedom. And so we've been praying for a couple of years now and there had been different things that that we had tried and and saw some some short-term success but nothing that the entire body of lifeway could rally around and could become a part of and and that's the beauty of cr is that it's not just the the small group of people but it engages the entire body uh in discipleship and, and walking people into freedom Well, nothing frustrates me more than bringing a problem before the church or before the community and not offering any solutions. Agreed. I do not like that in any way, shape or form. I don't like getting up and asking people to give and we're not actually actively doing anything to, to bring people into what I believe is justice against the enemy. And, um, addiction has been so much in our faces in the sense of there's a huge, huge problem. It's an epidemic. It truly is. And we can't just as a church say, well, there's a problem. Somebody else will take care of it. It it has been our prayer to be a part of the solution. And Jesus is the perfect solution and celebrate recovery. Literally God just put it in our laps this summer. Um, We've been praying and it was a direct answer to our prayers. Last year we worked with Eric Fredrickson and Mm -hmm. Mayana and they've moved on to Florida now. Congratulations to them. They get the beach all the time. (laughs) Eric, (laughs) but they also help spur us on in. Let's be a part of the solution. Let's not just, you know, say, Oh, there's a problem. Let's give money to it and just move on. But, but recognizing too, like he said that celebrate recovery, isn't just for addiction um, to alcohol or drugs, but it's literally we as pastors are going through the recovery process because we need to get free from hurts, habits, and sure. hangups. Yeah. We need to have a safe place. So it's not just for, it's for everyone and anyone. Um, so that's just 
where we see God answering prayer. And we, we have launched Celebrate Recovery about a month ago to the public. Neat, so, neat. Yeah. Now we'll get back to that. Bradley, tell us who you are. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Bradley Fields. I'm a, m- a member at Lifeway. I'm also a leader uh, with uh, Celebrate Recovery. I'm in recovery myself from uh, victories over uh, al- or drug and alcohol addiction. Um, uh, so guys, um, first of all, I do recognize just your heart for people, for for your faith in Jesus Christ and, and that being the solution and the hope. Um, we recognize here in the county and, you know, in our state, in our world, um, that we're all struggling right now with different things. So I appreciate you saying we all have stuff, you know what I mean? Um, we all have things that we need to be working on, but I think, you know, with addiction, it's just really important to have those opportunities to meet, to come together, to be challenged, to have accountability. So it sounds like you found a beautiful thing. So would y'all tell us a little bit about Celebrate Recovery, the philosophy, the framework? Yeah, so Celebrate Recovery was birthed out of Saddleback Church, okay. Pastor Rick Warren in California years ago. And the entire vision for Celebrate Recovery is seeing people find freedom from their hurts, habits, and hangups through Jesus Christ. Okay. And so every principle, every step of Celebrate Recovery is completely based off of Scripture. And that's where the power is. And, um, and so literally it just, it lays it out beautifully. There are, I believe 12 steps in the eight principles based off of the Beatitudes. And we know that who the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just about our own willpower and, you know, our own wisdom and, and trying to, um, find freedom on our own. But when we partner with the power of the word in Jesus, that's where true freedom is found. Lasting freedom is found there. And so that's the beauty of, of celebrate recovery is that it is completely Bible based. Nice. Yeah. I don't know, Bradley, you can probably speak to this, but I've sat in a recovery, um, an AA meeting. And in that meeting, I heard that your higher power can be anything you choose and I'm, my heart was breaking. I was with a friend who was there for heroin addiction. And my heart was breaking because I knew that a doorknob was not going to be the higher power she needed sure. to get free. And, and the 12 steps that are in Celebrate Recovery are the same ones that are in AA. But they are, what's cool is that it's there. scripture. Like it's there's AA. A biblical is, comparison there's, yes, to them. It's, yeah. It comes from the Bible, um, whether it's AA or Celebrate or another program. But um I just remember sitting there trying not to like jump out of my seat and say, no, there's real help. Like there's a real there's- father in heaven that loves you. And that's what I see is majorly different um, of people coming out of Celebrate. They come out knowing who they are and finding their identity. Cause most of the time when addiction is ruling a life, it's because they've lost who they are. Yeah. And Jesus is the best way to reestablish because he made us. And when you yeah. meet that, Um, but that was part of what celebrate for me stood out was I was seeing people come out like families healed and just incredible. Um, I don't want to call it results, but healing in people's lives. Yeah. I heard it said uh, earlier this week that the gospel is not just freedom from something, but freedom unto something. So it's not just the getting free from what I was addicted to, but freedom unto what is God's plan for the rest of my Mm. life? Because if we just, okay, I'm not addicted to this substance or this relational issue anymore or this financial issue anymore, that's great. But now what is the purpose of my life beyond what I was addicted to? Because that becomes our identity, right? Right. What we're addicted to, it's who we are. I am a drug addict. I am an alcoholic. I am a workaholic. And it's great to find freedom from that substance, but now who am I once I'm free? Yeah. Once you go from, I'm an addict to I'm a child of God. I mean, man, does that not reframe who we are? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it like, changes okay. things. Like Leslie said, that at the beginning of my recovery, I was kind of by family member, you know, kind of pushed into going into AA and I just, I, I wasn't finding anything there. I wasn't finding healing. And, and it wasn't until, uh, 
I had given my life to Jesus and, and, and started, you know, working in the church and reading scripture, getting into the word, fellowshipping with other believers and, you know, learning that I had to re redo everything, people, places, and things. And, and when I met Jesus is that everything started to change. Everything started to change for my family. My wife started seeing my, I should say my ex-wife, that's part of my testimony. I pushed her to the point of divorcing me, but with God, we got remarried again uh, over uh, a year ago. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's totally yeah, awesome. It's, but it's, it's like she said, it's, it's finding, it's not a higher power. It's Jesus. That's and right. he is the answer to everything. And it's taken, like Travis said, me to another step with celebrate recovery. When I came, when I, we moved down here, the Holy spirit led me into it wanted me to go to Christ based meeting. And I was kind of against it. I was like, I don't want to do that God because of the bad taste I had in my mouth from, you know, I'll say secular, you know, uh, recovery that there's just, you know, you know, working a program, talking to Evan, uh, uh, accountability partners and not having, you know, a real uh, solution. A solution. Yeah, exactly. So now, now I see purpose in celebrate recovery, you know, opening God's opening my heart up to that. Now this is what I need to do, uh, to, to, to show people Jesus is the answer and starting a recovery pastor like that. I wasn't something I thought of yeah, yeah, the yeah. life I was it stuck in before, you know, that was something God showed me. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to just change things for a second to throw stuff to the audience listeners. Um, we do a lot of work on the anti-drug coalition partnering with churches. And I know sometimes that looks weird to the community, but something you said was so important that you have to change everything. You, how you recreate, how your relationships are, just the pattern of your life. And churches do offer that perfect mechanism. You have spiritual, physical, relational, you have, you know, just a built-in support system, and you also have an answer, the yes. answer. So exactly. um, I just kind of wanted to throw that out, why there's this connection between recovery and churches and the work that goes on in the community. So let me ask you, how many people are attending the group? Are they mainly from your church? Do you have people out in the community? Yeah, that was what we really just loved initially about. We had five weeks of leadership training before the public launch, and immediately a lot of people from Lifeway jumped on board because okay. the, the. Well, I want to mention, mention Ron and Kristen Molloman, yes. who walked into Lifeway having experience with Celebrate Recovery and having ex like experience, and, and New Point still has a Celebrate Recovery operating as well right. on Wednesday nights. So they came and their hearts to see it multiply, not just stay at one place and it already is going out farther than that, but sorry, right. keep going. I just want to well, know. And that's awesome because even before we met Ron and Kristen and Jennifer and Jason mm -hmm. Hostetler mm -hmm. on the lead team as well, uh, Bradley and Danielle, we met them. We went out to lunch a Sunday afternoon and Bradley yeah. said, <laughs> my heart is to be a recovery pastor. And Leslie and I are like, we don't even know what that is, <laughs> but it sounds awesome. Yeah, right? we need one. <laughs> and it, it's a part of our vision. And so we we're getting to know these guys and just dreaming about the possibilities of what that could look like. And then in the door walks Ron and Kristen yeah. Molliman, who uh, were leading the CR at, at new point and, and then the friends of theirs who partner together. And so we formed this leadership team. We cast the vision for what celebrate recovery is. And then not only just life weight people, but others from the community started coming in the doors for, for leadership training because uh, just it's so compelling when you see someone step into freedom from addiction, it's contagious and, yeah. and you want to, there, there are people that we know of at Lifeway that had a heart for this, but they didn't know where to plug in. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we cast the vision and people just jump right on board because yes, this is something I, I know I want to be a part of this. And now this is an opportunity for me to plug in get to get connected and uh, be a part of something so much larger than just ourselves. But the beauty of it too, is the leadership. Uh -huh. They all have to go through recovery. Right. And so we have, there's, 38 of us, maybe close to 40. I don't know exactly the number anymore of leaders that are all walking through recovery. And 
you can't speak to it and invite someone in unless you're experiencing it for yourself. And that family like atmosphere that you're talking about too, it's like, you walk in and you are immediately part, like come sit at the table. Like you're a part of the family, pull up a chair. And that's the atmosphere that is happening on Thursday nights. It's really amazing. It's fun that you say that because I've been, and I might've said that in the last podcast, I've been going to a recovery group too, just for that same reason. And it is a really neat experience because, you know, you're real with people and we all struggle with stuff. And at the end of the day, those principles are godly principles Mm -hmm of how to get that other stuff yeah. is to let those other things not control us yeah. and to be controlled by Christ. So like it, it said, is kind the of the beauty a fun of thing. it is the hurts, habits and hangups when just God sees the big picture and all the, what do we have over 40 leaders? The mm-hmm. first, the first, when we first kicked it off that everybody's like, wow, you know, it, it's just, how God sees the big picture with Ron and Kristen, how, you know, through prayer that he bought, brought them there. Cause they asked me about a celebrate recovery, probably a month or so before Ron and Kristen even came through the doors. And I'm like, Lord, you know, you had me go to their, I mean, I, that's where I met. I okay. met Ron and Kristen from celebrate recovery. And then, you know, he sends them in when I go, I don't know what, I don't know how to start this, do anything like this. And then God just sees the big picture. For, so when you for, say <clears throat> there were 40 leaders, is that, the ability to lead there or can some of this break off into the twin city area and so they're part of our county and that is the dream that okay. with this team we developed this this i think this is the dream i'm speaking for ron and kristen and jen and yeah, jason ron, and you sure. guys it's, i know yeah. is that it goes beyond lifeway it goes beyond new point it's it's that we would be a place where people can come and and get trained and then go and start one and i think we already have a couple of churches planning on coming to Thursday night meetings and getting trained and doing leadership training so they can take it back to their church because this isn't, this isn't about life way. This isn't about our name. This isn't about, this is about saving lives and, and we can't make it about anything else. And so whatever we can do to see this kind of healing happening anywhere we can, that's, that's our heart. That's awesome. um, and, and our leadership's heart, which is incredible. God just puts such a, he puts things together so beautifully. He does. So, yeah. Neat, neat, neat. So what else? What are, do you want to tell them like what a Thursday night looks like? Walk them yeah. through a Thursday night. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we host Celebrate Recovery every Thursday. And unless you are unable to get to the building because of inclement weather, literally, th- th- we never cancel. No. Okay. And uh, so it, on Thanksgiving, there will be Celebrate Recovery. If Christmas Eve I or Christmas, Christmas Day Christmas. falls yeah. on a Thursday, which I think Christmas yeah, Eve this year is yeah, on a Thursday, have it every day. there will be CR mm-hmm. that night. Awesome. And uh, because where where else better to go for someone who's struggling in addiction than to a family Thanksgiving meal with, sure. with everyone. And so, um, and holidays are hard too, yes. especially, right. you know, if, if maybe your past has, has created some of those faults and family lines and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it's probably a great place to be as Absolutely. with your brothers and sisters. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So every Thursday, so where's Lifeway in case anyone wants Lifeway, to know? Lifeway, we're on the south side of New Philly, 742 Cookson Avenue, southeast, right across from Mark's Place. We literally set right off of 250. You can see the building um, there. And we meet every Thursday for CR. Six o'clock is what we call dinner by donation. So literally the night begins with fellowship. It begins with breaking bread together, sitting around the table and just getting to know one another. And so that is completely open to the public. They can come in. If you're just checking out CR, come in, eat with us. Bring your whole family. Bring your yeah. entire yeah. family. Of it. Like, is there good food? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like food. Is the best part. We have like <laughs> people literally giving for the food to come in. And then we also have like Pangrazios. They're donating a meal every other month. And nice. so any, any kind of uh, restaurant business that hears this, maybe they they want to be a part of that and mm-hmm. feeding feeding people on a weekly basis. Yeah. We are open. I think this week is meatball subs. Nice, yeah. Yeah. very fun. Now, yeah. does New Point also feed? I yes. do believe yes. so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. all the celebrate recoveries they kind of have yep. their their base, you okay. know, their foundation. It could I'm change depending it. on if it's before the meeting or after, after the meeting. meeting. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we've just yeah chosen to to have it before the meeting time okay. starts. So so six o'clock. Six o'clock dinner by donation, and then seven o'clock we kick off the large group meeting. Okay. And that consists of we have worship, 
we'll do announcements and um, there'll be kind of like a devotion that is shared and then either a teaching or a testimony. So it kind of rotates one, one Thursday, there'll be a, a teaching. And Bradley's the announcer. Yeah, I'm the host. Bradley's the we have eight principles, as he was saying tonight, yeah. and then a devotion. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ron's doing his testimony. Ron Moleman. Oh, yes. neat. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's awesome. And uh-huh. that's the, the, the beauty of, and we keep saying this, but it, it is just so relational. And one of the, um, kind of pillar verses for celebrate recoveries out of James confess your faults one to another yes. mm-hmm. pray for each other so that you may be healed. healed and I think that is where we've seen kind of our church culture take a detour is that we want to come in on Sundays and we want to look good look good talk <laughs> good smell good and that's not always we, the case <laughs> <laughs> um, but we we, we feel secure in our image of being in control. And so if we have it together, we look the part, we sound the part, everything is good. And Celebrate Recovery is taking it back to the heart of that, that, that honesty and, and the raw just bearing one another's burdens yeah. and confessing your faults and, and feeling in an environment that freedom to be able to do that because that's where true freedom is found. In that openness, and I hear Bradley share his testimony. I see part of myself in his testimony. Things that he is saying reveals things hidden in my heart that I didn't even know was there. Yeah. And so after the large group meeting, so that's that's an hour from seven to eight, and then at eight o'clock we break up into open share groups or small groups. Okay. And basically, the, the intent of that is just an opportunity to share what's on your heart. So if Bradley is leading one of those groups, um, he'll, he'll have a list of just general questions. And literally you go around the table. There could be three, there could be 10. Uh, it, it is, um, uh, all guys, all girls. So, okay. so the genders yeah, aren't separate. mixed and you just get an opportunity three to five minutes to answer each question Uninter- uninterrupted. uninterrupted. There's no crosstalk and the goal is not to fix each other. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. And that for me has been so freeing, like as a pastor sitting there, I'm like, wait, I don't have to. I just get to listen. And so often, once we go around the circle, I have found myself finding healing when somebody else is Mm -hmm. talking. Absolutely. And it's just that three to five minutes of just being open, being real and being vulnerable. And the more real we are with each other, the more healing comes. And it's not because somebody's preaching at you. It's because you're walking out life with each other. That's one of my favorite parts. God showed me it's it's unity. The the unity between that and and healing Mm -hmm. is is just amazing. Uh, you know, like you said, we allow, when we do the host, we, we, when people do devotions and we try to bring everybody in, we switch it up week by week. So everybody feels like they're a part of it. Absolutely. Like it's a family nice. and that's what God has shown me is unity. And that's what we need. We need Absolutely. unity in the whole body, all churches, everyone, just as Jesus wanted, no separation, mm-hmm. no division. Neat. <clears throat> so, now, if someone was going to come or mm-hmm. bring someone, um, Because I know some people, social anxiety and uncomfortableness coming into a new situation. Um, When they break up in small group, do they get to pick what group they go to? That kind of stuff. So your your very first time there after the large group for about the next 20 minutes to half hour, there is a 101. Okay. And so it's a newcomers group to where you get to go kind of just hear all of the general details of CR. And then you will go from there and join an already in progress open share group. So what we offer right now is there is for, for guys and girls, there is a chemical dependency open share. So if it's drugs and alcohol, you go there and then there's also an A to Z. So if it's depression, anxiety, finance, grief, sexual addiction, you go to that open share. Okay. And so it's kind of more specifically targeting what it is you're struggling with. And as this grows and, and multiplies, we can add just, you know, one for anxiety, specifically for yes. anxiety or specifically for um, financial stewardship, whatever it looks like. But, um, but yeah, it, it's uh, just a time that you go and get to get things out that sure. you're holding on to and, and feel completely safe. It is completely confidential. So what is said in that group stays there. Because it, it has to be a safe place. Yeah. If it's not, then freedom isn't going to take place. Right. So. Neat. Now, we just had a side conversation before we started. Kids can come too? Yes. Okay. Like yes. these are all important things. Food, you can bring someone. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Kids care and being able to come as a parent and 
trust that your kids are being loved and taken care of. And not only that, they're not being babysat. They're in a, do you remember what it's called? My wife would yell at me because I'm know, I'm I know. About they have it the a specific <laughs> name for the child care, and I can't remember. I don't have my phone. I'd grab it, but um, it's beautiful because what they're calling Something place. Celebration Place. Celebration Place. Good job. Good job. So Celebration Place is for kids zero to sixth grade. And that is, but right now teenagers are helping in that area as well. And that's for your kids. And they call it the pre-covery time for children. And so whatever we are discussing or learning in the large group as, as adults, they are getting in kid form. And it is basically giving them tools on how to handle life situations so that they don't repeat the past. And I think that's so powerful because I would want nothing more than my daughters to know the freedom of Jesus and how to handle life situations and not repeat the mistakes that I've made. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the beautiful thing about Celebrate Recovery. And hopefully in the near future, we're praying that the landing, which is the youth program, will open as well for the teenagers. Right now, they are all being awesome and just volunteering (laughs) and helping take care of the 18 kids we have in the room. But um, we have amazing adults that are running that kids program um, too. So that's exciting for me. I'm a preventionist by training. And, you know, there's a lot of, I always say all our issues are adult issues, really. Um, but our young people, you know, when, when our adults are working through whatever they're working through, whether it's a loss of job or stress of COVID or drug addiction or whatever, workaholism, whatever we're dealing with, our kids are impacted. And I think sometimes just in our, I guess, own sinfulness or whatever, we focus on ourselves Ourselves, and sometimes we don't realize how much whatever's going on in our adult lives really do impact our young yeah, people. Absolutely. So there's just so much our young people need to l- life skills. Yeah. You know, how do we, how do we talk about these issues? How do we understand them? How do we develop safe coping yeah. mechanisms? Yes. You know, yeah. how do we problem solve? You know, all those things are just vitally important. So as you talk about the program, it sounds like it's a pretty strong program. So I'm sure they're very mindful of what do those young people need. Yes. Yeah, and kids, we need to know, you know, kids have a voice. And I know that I've, with my son, he's 16, that, you know, we, we neglected to ask him, how do you feel? You know what I mean? Going through all this. So it's it's just God's open with the whole A to Z. It's, and, and then the leaders that God is it's just so amazing watching because of like Travis said, anxiety, anger, there's something for everybody. And that's the beauty that God shows me that he can, we can bring his people in for healing. Right. Like Travis said, James five sixteen. Yep. you know, that's how we get healing. <clears throat> now, often um, we get calls from parents, family members of people that are still in active addiction is this a neat place for them too? Yes. I mean, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So if your loved one isn't ready to come, um, but you're struggling with how do I, as a family member of a loved one, understand addiction, mm-hmm. yes. this would be a good place for very you. Very much. For sure. Okay. Yes, very much. Nice. We want to see families healed and whole. And if they won't walk in the door with you to start you starting and praying and moving in that direction, God does miracles still today. And so I think it's nothing but health to even for your own self because of the effects of the addiction on your life to go through recovery um, and counseling and whatever that looks like. So it can do nothing but benefit the family. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you mentioned counseling. Do you also let people know where community resources, Ohio Guidestone, community mental health? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Naloxone is available in our community. I just wanted to throw that out there because if you're coming to a faith-based recovery, I just want to let everyone know that we all work together in this county. You can't separate a person. Uh, We're whole people. So, Well, and we have a list of more groups of of christ-centered recovery groups in the county so that if they need on tuesday night or monday night or saturday night they need a group to go to it's there and this is neat and i'm looking at bradley um a key principle is you need that accountability and those connections so 
what a beautiful thing to know Monday night. I can go here Tuesday, I can go yeah, here Wednesday. And, and, and we were actually intentional in scheduling this on a Thursday because we knew that new point celebrate recovery meant on Wednesday. Wednesday. Nice. And so we didn't want to offer it on the same night that way. If, cause we have people that attend ours that also go to theirs, yeah. which is amazing. Wonderful. And so we wanted intentionally to have it on a different night for that very reason. Yeah. Neat. So it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, there's three that I know of, like Life Recovery Tuesday, New Point, and then us now. Yes. So three days of the week there, you got, you know, pretty much the same same meeting. You nice. Know? So it's awesome. <clears throat> nice. So hey. when, when people walk into our building, there it kind of hits you in the face, and it's, it's beautiful. It's a wall that's completely designated for Celebrate Recovery, and you can't miss it. And on there, there are resources available. So there, there is a Celebrate Recovery Bible. There is a Celebrate Recovery devotional. There's other pamphlets and informational brochures there that just help um, in understanding and help to you know provide uh, if you need a devotional if you're walking through that is targeted to recovery and the in the Bible as well. And we just. We offer those if if someone is financially struggling, they can't afford those. There's people that have provided the finances so they don't have to pay. We because we we want these in everyone's hand, and so it's that's always available as well. One other cool piece that isn't quite active yet because this is so new and we didn't have normally the training takes about uh, six months to get, but okay. we we fast tracked it and they're training us right now. But once we're all through our step studies, there will be step studies available for anybody in Celebrate Recovery. And what a step study is, is basically walking through healing from whatever it is. And it's taking you deeper into um, getting free from the past and moving into your, you are a new creation in Christ. And so those are also going to be available probably closer to December, but those are that that'll be another, they'll have a a group, maybe their open share group that they're in that they'll be a part of outside of celebrate recovery. So you will really build friend family relationships and also go deeper in your walk with Christ and continue to have that accountability and that freedom. So step studies will be the next thing that will be launching through Celebrate Recovery, which is really awesome. Now, will those step studies meet at the church or anywhere? anywhere someone's house? Yeah, yeah. small. It's it's small about group. a six month process okay. to go fully through a step study. And like I met with my guys this morning at seven o'clock at the Daily Grind. Nice. And so it can be anywhere. And a, a step study generally would be how many people max for ten, one of those? Ten, I think. Ten max. max. The the intimacy ten, factor sure. is is. Uh, crucial there. And they normally last about 90 minutes. And per, there is a leader study. and that leader has done a full blown okay. step study. Right. So you can't lead unless you've walked the process. Nice. And it is that same open share type thing mm-hmm. where you're, there's no crosstalk. There's no interruption. You're coming to answer and share the questions that you answered. And it's, it's again, that continual healing and, um, it sounds like confession, but it's not really, it's just processing out loud yeah. what God is doing in your life. So, and I'm sure when someone shares openly, it allows you to share open. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot sure. of times I think we get caught in shame and yes. and that secrecy is, I think, where we get really messed up. And, yeah. Um, so it creates I think a synergy of freedom. It does. That's, that's the freedom of celebrate recovery, the small groups, like he was saying about, you know, here's, we hear each other's testimonies that, you know, hey, it's just not me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of the small groups, like they said, if you get ten, that's the the the, the vision of it is they we start all from the same point. You mm-hmm. know, through each there's four books. Okay. And you go through each you know lesson. Everybody, will, you know, if there's a new group that starts, they'll start with the first one, and then you know they'll have their own group. So it, you become you fellowship together in that, and that you're walking it out together. You're not alone. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's yeah, it's awesome. Well, listen, this was really a great conversation. I hope uh, listeners are excited about just this growing effort, I would say, in our county um, that offers hope and healing and solutions and and community. Um, And I love just hearing everyone jumping in. And, you know, I love Tuscars County because... I just know so many people have a heart for our people and our young people yes. and our families. And, and you can just kind of see God's doing some great work here. So that's really fun. I love that you can bring your family, that you come in and um, it just sounds super exciting. Um, 
Any last words? We'll wrap up on this one. Um, while we were talking, the phrase, we're all equal at the foot of the cross, mm. kept rolling through my mind. And so often we come into church thinking we have to have it all together and we have to fix ourselves before we come to yeah. him where he, he is ready to pick up the pieces with us. And so I just see God doing that in this County and this is not a hopeless place. Yeah, no, this is full of hope. Yes. This is oh. full of hope. So let me just ask you as pastors, um, does a lot of your congregation come to celebrate recovery now? It's growing in number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I can see that being yes. really healthy for congregation. Yes. Because like you said, you're learning to get to know each other in a whole different way. Yes. If you're there. Absolutely. Yeah. It definitely is. Yeah. Rick Warren, in uh, one of the messages we were watching from him on Celebrate Recovery, he said there are two types of people in the world. Those who know they need recovery and those who don't know they need recovery. <laughs> and th there's there are things in our lives that everyone, like Leslie said, we're all equal at the foot of the cross. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how old you are, what your past experience is, how long you've been a follower of Jesus. Um, we are continually um, just living in that freedom that we have in Jesus and working out the, th the things that have been in our past and, and the road to recovery that we're all on. But it's for everybody. Yeah. It's not just for the drug addict we or the alcoholic. We have 70 year olds in our groups and we have 20 year olds. Yeah. Like it's amazing because it's cross generational yeah. and that's yeah. so exciting to me. Mm -hmm. And our, our, our elders are leading the way at Lifeway in coming and being a part and actually being a part of the solution, which is really fun because yeah. it's not just about one age bracket or one right. generation, but it's cross generational. I think that's awesome. Absolutely. That's neat. Yes. So addiction from anything that holds us bondage. Yes. Yeah. So very neat. So I'm just going to throw out there. Um, this is an effort of a church that God just placed it on their heart. Like, let's do something, you know? And I say that hope Sunday's coming up. We're going to have another effort in October in the community called project hope. And you're going to be hearing a lot of messages. You're going to see them in the newspaper and the radio. Um, that's going to say, we have some, some real struggles that are going on right now. Addiction issues with mental health. I, they're problematic right now, and we're seeing the evidence of that. But you're also going to see every single thing says hope on it. Mm -hmm. Project Hope, Hope Sunday. We know that there is a solution. We also know we're all in this together. And uh, as long as we're supporting each other, loving on each other, breathing life into each other, um, yeah. that there is hope. So if Absolutely. Listening to this makes your heart kind of pound a little bit. I would suggest coming on Thursday night and checking yeah. it out. Yes, yeah. definitely. And um, I guess that's what I say. That's Go Thursday night, check it out. Yeah, that's the heart of this community because I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for the events that you just said, Project Hope. That's where I met Travis and Leslie was Hope Rising. Awesome. I was asked to speak there. And you did a great yeah. job. Yeah. And uh, that's where I met everyone. And, or, you know, that's just... That's the big picture God sees, but that's the heart that drew me and my wife through a year of prayer down here from some, we were originally from Summit County, and that's what drew us down here. And, you know, we just said yes, you awesome. know, obeyed God, and this is... Neat, yeah. neat, neat. So if you also just kind of see the overdose deaths and statistics out there that we have, and you're like, yeah, I want to do something... This is a great place to start and, and just learn more because I think learning is that first piece. Because I think if addiction or real heavier mental health issues, if you haven't experienced them or known someone close, I think you're at a disadvantage that you just don't understand. And it doesn't take very long to understand how these things are just common to man. Yes. Yeah. And then to find out, you know, where can you fit in? How can you fit in? Because there are there are a million ways and a lot of it's just being in relationship with other people. And it's something that encourages me and just sitting this morning and listening to some of the guys I'm fellowshipping with and hearing their stories and thinking to myself, I have never gone through anything mm. like what they have lived through and walked through. But in Jesus, just because you have not walked the same road as another person does not mean 
you can't walk alongside of them and help them find freedom. Um, I mean, Jesus is the perfect example of that. He was sinless. He Mm -hmm. was perfect. But yet he came as an instrument of hope to this world, right? That's what we say. Hope is a person. Peace is a person. But yet he was without sin. And just because you haven't struggled with alcohol or drugs or whatever it may be does not mean God cannot use you to help others walk into freedom because we have all that we need in Jesus. So that's just encouragement for if if you're feeling like you want to engage in this or or help, you know, uh, in any recovery program or, or ministry, don't ever feel like you don't have what you need to be an instrument of hope for somebody else. I don't even know if there's anything else to add on that other than I am glad you were here today. I hope you're able to take some stuff away. I would strongly suggest checking out Celebrate Recovery. And no, recovery absolutely does happen. And yes. there is hope. Amen. Amen. There's hope. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you for having us. Oh, yes. sure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast. Please follow us on Facebook and visit our website at adctusk.org.